Traveling to Africa or Senia often comes as a surprise to enlightened Europeans and Americans. Such a case happened in 1996, when the French, British and Americans visited the remote Papua New Guinea. To make you understand the level of development of that country, I can say that even now there are at least 12 tribes of cannibals living on its territory. At the same time, many representatives of the local population do not even know what TV and telephone are, not to mention smartphones and other wonders of technological progress. So, to such wild people arrived with an expedition of Europeans and Americans in 1996. Communication with the locals was carried out thanks to an interpreter. The guests were honored to communicate with elders, shamans and the chief of one of the friendly tribes. It is striking that the tribal elders, addressing the Europeans, called them ordinary people. In the local dialect, this meant they didn't have a piece of heaven. Literally. When the question was asked, what was a sky particle, a stunning answer was given. Once upon a time, tens of thousands of years our ancestors came to earth. You didn't exist then. Or rather they were, but in a primitive form. We took them in, fed them and gave them milk. In return, we were given the secret knowledge of traveling between worlds, of communicating with our ancestors. We were endowed with the particle of heaven. Together with it, our most ancient ancestors learned the details of the starry sky, the basics of taming water, wind and fire. The celestial teachers flew away on their silvery stones and never returned. My great-grandfather told my grandfather, he told my father, my father told me, I told my children that we are descendants of the inhabitants of the Swan constellation. At this point, the researchers decided to catch the local wise man and asked him to draw the constellation and point out where it was located. Taking a stick, the elder easily and quickly depicted a schematic image of the Swan constellation and pointed with his hand in the right direction of the sky. After that, the guests were offered to communicate with the spears of ancestors. During the ritual the shamans entered an altered state and spoke with different voices. The whole procession was accompanied by burning various herbs, drinking concoctions and singing. The colorful performance ended, and the researchers were led to a special hut. There were drawings made by children of the tribe. Amazingly, existing literally in the forest, the children accurately depicted the planets of the solar system, as well as diagrams of other constellations, with the correct number of planets around the stars. The amazing accuracy with which the images were executed astronomers confirmed only 15 years later, when modern technology allowed to consider the neighboring galaxies. At the end of this expedition, the chief was asked, why do the tribesmen now live in such savage conditions when they cannot even afford metal goods? The answer was expected. You are the savages living in stone slums, and we are part of this world, of this nature. One must give credit to those words. Many researchers believe that the path of our development is detrimental and erroneous. Instead of spiritual and cultural development in coexistence with nature, we have chosen an aggressive path, which, with a high degree of probability, can lead mankind to destruction. Of course, it remains a mystery how and when the representatives of a rather archaic tribe of Papua New Guinea got knowledge about deep space. Perhaps it is a consequence of play contact. As for the sky particle, there is an assumption that the women of the tribe had sexual intercourse with aliens and gave birth to a new species of people. But, that's just one hypothesis. Maybe it's about spiritual knowledge or something similar.